uh, won the Magic Hour, and I think we've got uh, all the, uh, the folks that uh, are going to be here, here. So uh, why don't we get started? We'll uh, call the April 25th, 2018 uh, Town Board Work Session to order. We'll let the minutes uh, reflect that uh, we have uh, all but one uh, board member. Mr. Quinn is uh, uh, out on business and will not be here tonight. Uh, we have a number of members of staff and uh, some distinguished audience. Uh, that includes that young man right there, part of the distinguished audience. Um, so uh, we'll hit a couple of items and then we'll get on to our agenda. Um, we have the uh, minutes uh, of April 11, 2018 before us and want to entertain a motion uh, of approval for those minutes. I'll move. A second. Then moved and seconded uh, discussion on those minutes. Seeing no discussion, uh, those in favor, aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, that motion carries and the minutes uh, are approved. Uh, we have uh, our monthly reports uh, are uh, up to date. Uh, we have no public hearings this evening. Uh, we have uh, no guests uh, tonight. Uh, we do have uh, uh, folks in the audience that may uh, join us on a couple of these items. Uh, but let's uh, start uh, with our action items and we'll start with uh, DPW Paul Barn, Mr. Eric Tate. Thank you. Mr. Tate. Thank you. Um, so as you'll see, there's a, kind of a packet in front of you. Um, we did get some grant money for a uh, pole barn to go on our existing facility over at 15, uh, 1607 Jackson Road. Uh, with trying to figure out where the best location for it may be, um, you know, we know there's the red barn out front, um, but it's not in the, the best shape. Um, it's certainly kind of you know, seen its age and um, we tried to figure out you know, where it may fit um, with that, you know, kind of the condition of the, you know, the existing barn. Uh, we tried to see how a new pole barn may fit in that spot. So the first um, sheet you'll see is an aerial of the existing conditions and kind of showing where, you know, how some of the parking lays out. The second page shows you know, kind of a black and white um, just to help clear everything up of the existing conditions. And then the third page is kind of what we're talking about you know, for a proposed layout to show how it may fit and we can um, not only actually remove some pavement um, and turn it back to kind of green, um, you know, pervious area, you know, help with the kind of stormwater um, side of it. Um, but also, you know, rather than having to, uh, you know, really do anything additional pavement wise, um, it, it would already kind of work out um, and be a nice you know, repurposing of the area um, as well as the utilities <coughs> are kind of already there to have the electric ran to it. So. The, 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 the purpose of the, the pole barn will be for to get our, all of our vehicles, as you can see, kind of on that first page, um, there's some that are parked, you know, outside on the very left of the page. You can see, you know, somewhat make out a lot of the vehicles are being left out in the, you know, weather. Um, and you see it on the weekends. Driving yeah, on. the, the yeah. weekends you see them parked out front. Um, there's even more parked out back, you know, behind the gates, you know, year round. The between the the rain, sun, you know, salt, it's wearing on them. Um, so it helped uh, kind of promote the life. Yeah. And the funding them for this came through a state grant? Yes, through uh, Senator Funky. Okay. You Does they not, cover it? Does it cover it? How much more do you think? Uh, right now I'm looking to kind of advertise for bids. So, uh, you know, we'd have to do a bid opening to see exactly what they come in. That money was based on a pole barn um, a few years ago, so there may be a, a slight increase as you know from when the time we started the paperwork um, to kind of what the actual construction cost may be now but it shouldn't be too far off. So the grant secured by Senator Funky was an amount of $129,000? Correct. So, so 
sizable chunk and, mm -hmm. and should cover you know, most, if not all. And so, Tony, today you're looking for a green light from us for Eric to keep proceeding ahead? It's, uh, yeah, yes, okay. uh, the easy answer is yes. Um, as um, Eric as Eric and his team were taking a look at uh, the best location uh, for this uh, so that uh, we did not um, uh, either underutilize or uh, set ourselves up uh, for any circulation problems. Uh, took a look at a number of the sites, a uh, number of the uh, uh, locations on the site, and thought, uh, based on the condition of this uh, building, uh, that building, uh, the uh, current red barn has been there for many, many years. We've kind of patched up a little bit uh, to make it uh, safe. Uh, demoing that um, and replacing it uh, with this barn uh, would take care of uh, all of that uh, and keep it in an area where we could clean up the front uh, entrance, um, lessen the pavement, uh, clean up the curb appeal on the front, uh, and uh, have a, a 60 by 100 uh, usable uh, pole barn uh, for uh, DPW in general. Unheated, so it's cold, it's cold storage. Cold storage, it's but got, still have lights. It's got lights. Um, and then uh, so on, on the north and south end uh, would be uh, overhead doors and uh, so that uh, you could pull in one, yep. one end out the other. Yeah, I'm, I'm supportive of this. I, I think we should proceed ahead. I think it's uh, sorely needed. Certainly appreciate Senator Funky's um, grant. Certainly, Tony, we should, or you should take some credit for proposing the state grant to him for his uh, securing the appropriate funding and let's just let's move ahead and get it done. I'll make a motion that um, we permit Eric to uh, pursue the bid process so that we can take full advantage of that grant. Okay. Second. Second. Okay, it's been moved seconded and then uh, what we'd look to do is uh, we'd look at our next town board meeting next Wednesday. Uh, we'd have a resolution in advertising for bids uh, with a bid opening um, in middle May and uh, award uh, hopefully uh, by uh, June 1 or the first week in, uh, first week in June. Uh, we have, and just for the record, uh, all the paperwork uh, between Eric and Barbara, all the, all the paperwork has been uh, submitted to the state and accepted uh, for us to move forward. Right now, surely, uh, where is the uh, location that the board would like to see it? is all that uh, we have to provide back to the state. Okay. Okay. Great. Thank you. It's uh, been moved and seconded. Uh, any further discussion? Seeing none, uh, those in favor, aye. Aye. Opposed? All right. Mr. Tate, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Move on to uh, our second item, having in place subdivision, section six, uh, Mr. Costello. And uh, Rob, if uh, you like, uh, you're welcome to come to the, uh, to the table. I think at the public hearing you had no voice. Uh, <laughs> no, we can't use that as an excuse tonight. No. Okay. How's right. everyone tonight? Very good. All right. So, Mr. Castello, if uh, you would uh, lead the board in any updates or changes that happened since uh, the public hearing that uh, we had on March 7th. Thank you, Tony. Uh, we did have our public hearing. Um, we held off for a while. Uh, Rob's brother Rudy was uh, uh, taking care of some uh, uh, health business and. Uh, that's why Rob's here tonight because he hasn't finalized that yet, I guess. So, uh, the, the actual subdivision proposal this is the last phase of the Abington Place subdivision. Uh, it's a 14 lot subdivision in phase six. Everything else is either in the process of being built out or has been. Um, in addition to the 14 lots in phase six, there is a pond which actually has been constructed now for quite a while. Yes. The pond will have to you know, be looked at by town staff to ensure that it's still functioning and hasn't silted in in certain locations. We'll work with them to do that. The other issue at hand was the fact that if you go back to phase two or three at the bottom of the plan, um, there is a stub road that's proposed to go southward into the property to the immediate south, owned by Vendel. Um, that has not been installed to date. Um, we have indicated, PRC has indicated that we're supportive of having that done uh, prior to phase six being completed, and they've agreed to do that. Um, we don't want to leave that stub there, you know, and, and then have somebody else have to come in and do it later on. Um, the only other issue at hand, I mean, those issues are all kind of worked out already with town staff. The only outstanding issue is that Rudy and Rob indicated both prior to and at the public hearing that they would like to screen approximately six to 8,000 cubic yards of uh, soil. It's, uh, it's uh, extra soil that's left from the site. 
um, and the intent is to screen it on site and then sell it um, uh, from the property. Um, I know that the neighbors in the past, particularly to the north, have been concerned about screening and noise and hours of operation. Time of year. Time of year. Uh, so if the board's inclined to allow that to occur, the recommendation would be to set controls in terms of hours, days, um, even the amount of time it's going to take to you know, hopefully encourage them to get it done quickly and off-site quickly if you're going to do it. Um, it is in a remote location on the property. You can see the orange xed out areas are houses that are under construction now in that phase. Um, everything else, the green area is the pile itself, and then the blue is the uh, is the area that uh, the screening will occur. So um, I know that they have talked to Bill, uh, Bill Vendel about it. Um, he hasn't expressed any concern to me uh, as to where it is, just that uh, they take good care of the area and not make it a you know a dust bowl back there. I have not talked to the others around, um, uh, but again, it was addressed at the public hearing, so you can certainly talk to the immediate neighbors if that's an issue. So, if I if I recall correctly, at the uh, public hearing, uh, the way you were going to do it, uh, you were going to leave. Uh, you're going to uh, pull from the back side, from the correct. south side, if I correct, if correct. I remember correctly, leave the north uh, side of that, uh, which acted as somewhat of a buffer uh, yep. for that load, and then take it out and uh, exit out up on uh, uh, 250 Fort, uh, Fairport uh, Webster Fairport uh, Nine Mile Point Road uh, through the, through that area. That's correct. Yeah, we're going to try to leave a, a nice thick section in the front, and it has. I mean, when it's actually decent weather. It has a good two, three feet of nice grass grass growth. And we're gonna to try to leave that all intact. It helps erosion and it also will, you know, buffer the, the noise. But like Mr. Costello said, we're a decent amount away from anybody, you know, where they're living. There's a hedgerow to the south of the property too, isn't there? On the Vendel property? Yeah. There's a yeah. tree area. Yes. It's pretty thick and we haven't touched it and he hasn't touched anything on his side either. So it's it's decently thick right there. So the board in the past has been sensitive to, you know, neighbor concerns and this issue. So what you've done in the past obviously is ensured that uh, the, the uh, contractor um, has water on site in the event that there's a need for yeah. dousing the area and keeping it wind, uh, dust free. Um, the hours of operation and um, certainly those we would look at to make sure that they're not disrupting people at 7 a.m. in the morning, that right. type of thing. It's really no later than business hours and probably even at dinner time or before that. You haven't let them do it on, on weekends, um, and then you try to get a time frame in which they're going to lock it out. So I think um, one of the earlier sections, so the gray shaded area is section six where the 14 lots uh, are for consideration uh, for this evening. I think uh, to the north there was a topsoil pile uh, up there, now probably coming up on about two years, round numbers, yeah. two years ago. I think, I think the board had done a good job working uh, with staff and the applicant about uh, putting some criteria uh, mm -hmm. for that. Uh, I think it talked about hours of operation. He hit a number of those things, uh, Mr. Gastello, that uh, you had talked about having water on the site, uh, hours and hours of operation. Uh, I think notification of the neighbors mm -hmm. uh, and things like that. I think if we were to, uh, and I would propose uh, that we pull that wording out and uh, as uh, we look to uh, draft a resolution for the board to review that uh, we had, if we used a lot of that same criteria, I think uh, that worked well uh, for neighbors, it worked well for the town, I think it worked well for the developer uh, when we did that mm -hmm. uh, the last time. And I will prepare that for you for review and then incorporate that into the resolution and then one of the conditions would be that they get their permit as part of the process of site plan. So I know, I know it, uh, Rob, that it's, uh, it's somewhat dependent upon, you know, supply demand uh, right. type of thing. Uh, based on, you know, the, the six to eight uh, thousand cubic yards you, you have, you got any rough idea what you might be looking at uh, for a uh, time frame? I'd like to think we'd have it cleaned up by September. I mean, the building business is booming and everybody's already crying for yards and they're already asking where's topsoil so got it i think it's going to go pretty fast okay in my opinion is i mean and it's it's real nice stuff and uh billy boyce is always you know does a really good job and he has a good reputation hey mr boyce was what uh, did the other pile for yeah yeah and then we 
also are planning to post, which we did in the past too, several signs throughout the neighborhood at you know, trucks, five to 10 miles an hour max speed, even lower than what a speed limit would be, just because, you know, we don't want, you know, sometimes you get a trucker, he gets a little fast, and if we find a guy like that, he's not allowed back in, because there are customers too, and, and we do a pretty good job of, of, if not daily, every other day, getting the roads cleaned. I think we have a pretty good reputation of keeping it clean, and it, it only hurts us too. Mm -hmm. You've got a brand new road, it's right. got stuff yeah. all over. Yeah. Other other questions or comments? Um, uh, so the topsoil was one one issue. Uh, I think you were going to leave a couple of thousand cubic yards for uh, use uh, as On part site. of the project uh, overall. Yep. But you did indicate at the public hearing that uh, you were going to be posting signs and do, doing and performing regular uh, cleanup mm -hmm. uh, of that. Okay. Board, other questions, uh, comments at uh, this time? All right. Mr. Castell, anything additional that we haven't talked about that uh, we should uh, add to the record as uh, part of this uh, discussion? I think you've covered everything, um, I, and I want to incorporate all of those comments into the final resolution. Okay. And then I'd ask the applicant any questions of the board uh, of anything that uh, we discuss either at public hearing or here this evening. No, I think we're good. Okay. And you guys, you know, we're more than happy to work with whatever requirements you guys think. Okay. Very good. Uh, if that's the case, uh, would uh, someone uh, be... I move that we uh, um, add a place subdivision for a resolution next week. Okay. Uh, um, so section six. Section uh, six. Second? I'll second. Okay. Uh, further uh, discussions? Mr. Costello, you will get that uh, prepared for the board. Uh, I will. For our uh, May meeting. Now, uh, those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? All right. Thank you very much. Thank Appreciate you. it. Thanks. Thank Have a good evening. Uh, absolutely. You too. Uh, our next item is a conditional use permit at 1802 Penfield Road. Uh, this, this was for uh, the um, uh, uh, to allow a nail spa at uh, 1802 uh, Penfield Road. And uh, uh, Amy and her husband Anthony, uh, welcome. Thanks. And son Zachary. Zachary, there welcome. You very good. He's uh, the sharpest dressed uh, young man that uh, we have uh, here uh, in the audience and at the table. So. He's very interested in politics, so we want to see the process. Here. Oh, Sandy, <laughs> well, welcome. So, uh, Zachary, please we'll come right to the table. To please come right, we'll come right to the table and uh, join join in. He uh, got accepted at McQuaid today, so oh, we're celebrating yeah, for yeah, dinner, hence the reason why. So, uh, congratulations. Uh, what grade are you heading into? Ten. Very good. Congratulations. I have a, a granddaughter that got uh, accepted at Mercy, and uh, she's looking forward to start starting there in uh, September. So congratulations. Thank You're, you so much. You will uh, be a great role model for, uh, for McQuaid. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Very good. So uh, we had held a public hearing uh, on the uh, 21st of March on this application, and uh, a lot of uh, input was uh, provided uh, by the applicant as it related to number of stations, number of chairs, customer service, uh, making sure that uh, employees didn't have their cell phones on, uh, employees in uniforms, uh, making sure that they're really uh, paying attention to customer service, uh, which uh, is a big uh, focus. I think uh, square footage is approximately 1,100 plus 500 um, as uh, part of that. Um, I think uh, I recall 600 clients uh, for skin care. Uh, the parking's great. Uh, hours of operation uh, is uh, predominantly, um, I think, uh, Tuesday through Sunday, off on Monday, if I recall correctly. Yeah. And then uh, Amy uh, would be doing some by appointment only uh, work uh, for, um, I'm not going to have the right tech now. Skincare. Right? Skincare. Skincare, thank you. Perfect. You know, living with a lot of women in my house, I still haven't picked <laughs> up on all that. That's okay. Um, talk about uh, the signage uh, being uh, pretty much similar to, to what was there and uh, within the boxes available, and that uh, the town board would have an opportunity to review. I think uh, indicated nine employees, um, some retail, I think Linda asked about retail. And uh, of course, something new that I think we all learned, which was a venting, uh, that uh, is a new requirement in New York State uh, if you're doing nails and things like that. So, uh, with that, 
Mr. Castell. Yeah, pretty intent on that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, with that, uh, Mr. Castell, anything new uh, to add to the record for the board? Uh, just, uh, I was just talking to them earlier, and I just wanted to clarify the time that they start in the morning because they were pretty good about the times they were going to leave at night. But uh, we clarified that at 10 a.m. Uh, and I guess my question: Are you leaving the existing site that you have now? I am. You are. Yes. Okay. Yes. And right. the Lombardos no. As and well. I. I was trying to find out how many years you've been there. You said five the other night, I think, but I thought it was more than that. No, it's five. So we've just been in New York State for six. Okay. So it's only been All right. Five, yeah. I just want to make that as a reference in the. Yeah, that flew by. That's okay. yeah, it's five. That's pretty much it. I have drafted a, a, a resolution for your review, which I will get out to you tomorrow. And it, I think it encompasses all the things yeah. that uh, Tony well, I thought it was an about. excellent presentation. You're so comprehensive and everything. Oh, well, thank you. I you know, appreciate that. We don't always get that, but it was very clear in your intent. And <laughs> excellent, thank you. I, the extra information. My son didn't think I did a very good job, no. by the way. He criticized me and told me I. <laughs> I didn't know my stuff. I do mock trial and model UN, so like I hear people talk all the time. So like I'm used to very fluent, like they don't stutter over their words. They're like consistently. Don't you talking love this kid? Yeah. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And, yeah. and, and who, who's paying for your high school? <laughs> <laughs> in a private school? <laughs> you better be careful. I love them. I love them to death. Just right. a little bit of criticism. Our future is in good hands, obviously. Yeah. 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 It sounds like the future is in good yes, hands. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Very, very good. Very good. Good. Well, I, I, I support this. I certainly appreciate you keeping your business in Penfield. Thank you. I'm sure you had a lot of options to choose from, a lot of attractive communities, and um, I think staying in Penfield is it's good for everybody, and so I, I personally appreciate you you know, you staying in this neighborhood, staying in the community. We so want any you. other way. We love it. It's, right. it's yeah. for us. So. Yeah. Right? Excellent. Um, Perfect World, uh, remind us again uh, when you uh, would like to open. I'm thinking in the Perfect World, June 15th. I was had a conversation today with Landlord Lewis, um, and uh, he had some um, items that he, he was responsible for, and he asked me if I would kind of just serve as the subcontractor and just say, look, just let me know what it's going to cost and, and do it. He, he was responsible for new tile floors, painting the walls, and taking down the temporary walls that the uh, yoga studio had put in as a kind of like a barrier, an eight foot barrier. So um, I told him I would do that, and as well as the things that I need to do, like the venting and the plumbing and the electrical. And that's um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna pursue that. I I, I have uh, pretty much made made the decision on the contractor. Um, I'm looking at one more person tomorrow, and then I'll make my final decision. Um, but yeah, I, I I think we can get to work pretty quick. So. I was pretty impressed. He actually came in for building permit applications the day after the public hearing. So that's a good sign. Actually, I saw him at the building at the building department uh, doing that, and uh, I, under, I understand that uh, Zach has been willing to uh, help do some demo work uh, to help uh, manage. One hundred percent. Oh project. yeah. He's, he's <laughs> whether, whether he likes it or not. <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty much the way it's going. It's a family. It's going to be a family business. Yeah, he's going to he's going to do his so part. You're all good to go. <laughs> All right. Uh, other uh, questions or comments, uh, board, uh, on this uh, particular application. Mr. Costello, anything uh, additional that you'd like to add that uh, has not been added to the record either at the public hearing or this evening? The only thing is that um, Amy did submit a uh, copy of the sign application, a sign uh, proposal. I will send that out to you. I haven't had a chance to do it, and I apologize, but it, it's a pretty standard. plain sign. Yeah, it's a standard sign. It's in the box. I don't think the same being, yeah. as L's. All the way yep. Yeah. I'll get that out to you. Okay. Let's get you right. up Fantastic. and moving. Yeah. Thanks. So we we're excited. Right. We're ready. That we accept the conditional use. Any, yep. Uh, I was just going to ask uh, before we do that, uh, Linda, if I may, just uh, anything additional from uh, the applicants? Uh, any questions you might have for the board uh, on this particular application? No, I think I'm. I think we're in good shape. We're anxious to get started and. Uh, all right, and I would give the floor to uh, Linda. Oh, I was just moving. Will the application is granted and conditional use permit for the? salon and uh, that we have the resolution prepared for next week. I'll, yeah. Go ahead, Paul. I'll second. It's been moved um, and seconded. I think uh, we have uh, hit everyone around the table uh, for any additional comments, uh, input, and uh, seeing no further discussion on this matter, um, I would uh, ask for, roll, for a uh, vote. Uh, those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, matter carries. The resolution uh, will be before the board uh, for 
uh, next Wednesday. It will. All right. Thank you. Thank very you good. Very appreciate much. it. Thank Zach, congratulations. Good yeah. luck. Good luck. Uh, dinner to celebrate his yeah. acceptance yeah. in yeah. this. So yeah. appreciate yeah. everything, guys. Two right. desserts tonight. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't Thank know you. if I can take all that. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Have a nice night. All Thank right. You. Thank you very much. <laughs> All right, we'll move on to um, our next item, which is uh, building tenant proposal for 2146 uh, Fairport Nine Mile Point Road. Again, Mr. Costello, uh, Dr. Falone has uh, is in the house and has joined us, and uh, we'll give him a moment to put his site plan. So Dr. Falone was into the board last meeting and um, we talked a little bit about the idea that he did receive, as you remember, he did receive preliminary overall approval for the three buildings. Uh, the one on the bottom is constructed obviously, that is where Moe's and, uh, oh, thank you, and um, the AT&T and also now the future uh, restaurant coming in, uh, that will be before you in May. The third building to the back. Uh, is proposed to be an office building which would be in compliance with uh, code in terms of use. The building in front, which I believe was a 4,000 square foot building. Yep, 4,500. All right, that received preliminary approval and, and Bob talked about the fact that he has two tenants. He has Metro Mattress. Metro Mattress. And, and then also Pizza Hut. Yeah. And obviously Metro Mattress is a pretty uh, innocuous in terms of traffic generation, that type of thing. The board was a little concerned about uh, the Pizza Hut. They did ask me to convey to, to Bob some of the things they'd like, to, like him to talk about. Uh, the Metro Mattress number of employees and number of employees on the site at any given time. Uh, potential number of customers that visit the site per day based on current volumes that they, they uh, experience and the hours of operation. And with the Pizza Hut, the number of employees and number of employees on site at any given time. The seating proposed for the site and the hours of operation. And I, I will recall that the board is not excited about the idea of uh, drive through uh, service at that site. So in addition to that, um, Bob did ask for Jim Crackman's number. He's trying to resolve the issue with the uh, lighting situation out there that the contractors disrupted when they were doing some uh, underground utility work. He's been uh, uh, hooking up with Jim Crackman to get this resolved. So he has Jim's number and they'll be taking care of that soon. So with that, um, any comment? You just handed something out. I'd like to get a copy of that actually if I can. Thank you. So, just so that uh, at least I, I am, so I apologize. So, the, uh, the building uh, that is closest to, to Route 250, um, the, the south, what I'll call the south building, that's the uh, current uh, building uh, where Moe's and uh, ATT. And then uh, the Chen um, that, that is going to their their operation that uh, they're going to move in there, and so then the building to the north uh, will be Metro Mat Mattress and Pizza Hut, yes. and then and that'll be the Metro Mat Mattress that's coming from uh, the northwest corner of 250 and 441 that's in the Plaza by AAA. Yes. Okay. And then the building in in the back uh, that's all going to be Genesee Valley Physical Therapy. Correct. Okay. And just to remind the public and the board, this this is a discussion that I generated because I wanted the board to have a comfort level as to whether or not he should move forward with a, yeah. with a proposal to the board for a permit. Uh, this is not a permit process right, right. here. No, no, I under, understand. Yeah. Thank you, Jim, for that. And then, um, and I heard, I think I heard that the Genesee Valley Physical Therapy approximately 4,500 square feet. 4,000. 4,000 square feet. Is Genesee Valley relocating from somewhere else, or is it They're in the. Uh, they're up the road. Uh, they're in the East Court. In, yeah, Penn Penn Fair yeah. Office okay. Building Park or something like that. Yep. By Little Caesars. They're moving. It's further the north. It's by Pembroke okay. Drive. Oh, okay. Um, Got it. Okay. Because I thought I thought that they were already existing. It's in somewhere. the old Sealer uh, yeah, Office Park. Yeah, Sealer's uh, property. Got it. Okay. Okay. And then and then. Um, so as I as I take a look at this uh, Metro mattress, uh, three and a half employees on site at any time, number of customers that visit per day, uh, based on the current volume, is uh, eight to ten customers per day, and then uh, the hours of operation 10, 10 a to nine p Monday through Saturday and ten a through seven p on Sunday, and then on the Pizza Hut side. Um, 
uh, it's uh, uh, eight eight slash four. Is it? Well, they have eight employees at, but only four at any one time. At any one time, okay. And that's what the Metro mattress do. They have three employees for that site, and then maybe one to two will work at any one time. Okay. And then their seating uh, originally uh, was uh, at a uh, 36, now down to 20 to 25. Correct. So like five tables or five booths? Or? I think they're doing booths. And then, uh, so the discussion around uh, the drive-through or drive-through window? No, no, no drive-through. Okay. Board questions, comments? Yeah, I'd like to see what it looks like. We know what Metro Mattress. We were asking about Pizza Hut last time because there's that little mini Pizza Hut over in Baytown. Is it going to be something like that? Mm -hmm. I, well, I mean, the building's going to look just like the 6,000, the one to the south. So the decor of the outside of the building, the outside is going to look identical, just smaller. Instead of three tenants, it will be two. But the Pizza Hut, I mean... It, so the Pizza Hut will have their, kind of like what Moe's did with uh, on their site. They'll have their sign. Mm -hmm. But the aesthetics of the building will be comparable to what is existing there right now? Correct. So there won't be a like red roof or anything like that. No, I don't, no I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't believe it's that. So your, yeah. your intent now for the board is to actually come in and ask for final approval for both the 4,000 and then the other building to the back? Yeah. Okay, so you'll have architectural drawings for the back building as well if you yeah. come in. So the, the front building, which is Metro Mattress Pizza, what's the square footage of that? 4,500. That one's 45. And, and then the one in the back is so... Four. Is four, so... Not, not the drawing there is not necessarily to scale. Right, that one that we did the preliminary was five thousand. Okay. So we're actually making it smaller. Making it a thousand square foot. Okay. There's also concern about the the signage because you're so far out. Would it, we, you know, could you get signage at where Jeremiah's is and across from Target, the light, you know, to to get people to come in or. Is it, well, I think putting the building back there too is going to block the neighbor or block any visibility from lights from the neighbors too. The signage issue is, is an interesting situation. This property is is not part of the rest of the incentive zoning program that you did for the other properties. Right. So there is that one freestanding directory sign as you come into the project over by Jeremiah's. I'm not like certain it. at this point in time if there are enough panels left on that to identify these yeah. three uses. We'll have to look at that yeah. and certainly before they come in I will have information for you on that. If, if they can do that it would be preferable. If they can't um, it is a separate parcel so they would be able to have an, their own direct signage uh, on that property for the for the two uses that are, or the three uses. That are See, in the there. Sign, signs on the building are going to be the first thing visually right. that people are going to yeah. see. Anyways, it's, it's the one in the back that's problematic. It's mainly the one in the back. Yeah. Get around. Yeah. That's right. I think. This is the whole connectivity right all the way to Central Road now yep. because this would... This will this will actually tie it into the trial property. It all yeah, I have to put the piece of road behind the car wash in. That was, if you remember, that was the incentive. That was part of the yeah. incentive to go off site you know? and, and do that for us. No, so. that, that's something positive. It's a good long time. You know, I, th I think this is a pretty good use. You know, you, especially the fact that it's not going to be a drive through and all that. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Pizza Hut's oh, popular. And it's only a small, but it's not a lot of, a lot of seating. It's like a cafe size. Yeah. Um, I mean, you'll yeah, get they're people coming out of the It's like a bistro. So, uh, yeah. It's only 2,000 feet. Yeah. There will be delivery? Yes. Okay, so there will be a specified location for your vehicle uh, to park. Like drive. Like yeah, and, and a lot of not in the front saying Pizza Hut, Pizza Hut, Pizza Hut, yeah. which we're wrestling with a lot right now. Um, I do have a question though on the, the road in between uh, Cornerstone and the car wash. Yes. Is that a town road? No, it's not a town road. It's privately owned. We do have an ag a maintenance agreement with a portion of that road, not all of it, but a portion. Because have you have you seen it? Yes, we know. Um, okay. I mean, that that was going to be my so that, so that you're uh, perfectly in for me because um, I had mentioned to uh, Mr. Costello last Thursday as I 
looped around uh, in the back there Thursday morning, uh, a couple of things um, kind of jumped out at me. Uh, condition of the road is very, very bad. Uh, the dirt pile is still there, and uh, there was a boatload of uh, building debris Garbage. that uh, folks uh, are dumping and what have you. And it's been, it's been a year or more since we talked about the dirt that was going to go more than a year ago, and uh, which is still there. So unless something happened between Friday and today, uh, well, I would guess... Done, we have taken about half of it away. We've taken some of it away. Yes. yes. So, and, yeah. uh, and then that's been replaced with the building debris and things that uh, folks have been so gracious to drop off uh, so they don't have to uh, it's, dump it it's, uh, it's a landscaper that is using Trout's property. So I've talked to him. We put the sign up for a, a no dumping sign. I mean, this is on Jim's property. Yep. It's not even <coughs> his property, but Jim's in the hospital, so I told the guy that's kind of managing the property that I would take care of it. So we'll, we're going to take out the debris, and then the rest of the uh, the dirt is going to be transported away. So, I mean, half of it's gone already. So, so when's the other half going to be gone? Within the next couple of weeks. So if we if we if we held on this for a couple of weeks, uh, to well, when's the next? When would be the next meeting? Uh, the next meeting would be the tenth. Well, it doesn't work that way. If you're going to submit an application for final approval for those two buildings, you're going to have to get the plans prepared down to the final details for engineering, which is going to take a while. But they're not at this point in time. If you're using the same engineer, I know he's, he didn't do all the work right. that he had to. And then we have to advertise it, and we'll, we'll have to uh, send it to the county. So that it's going to be a minimum of 30 to 45 days if everything were done so, immediately. So, so if we speak positively to this, it's not going to a resolution or anything. It's just going to no, right follow now, up on all these other issues he has. Yeah, but even, even if it, it was a perfect situation right now and you were totally all set with this, mm -hmm. The soonest I could get a public hearing at this point in time, if I were to submit something for next week, would be like the first week in June, June yeah. and June six. And even that, I mean, it's it's kind of tight. So, right. I, I I'm sure his engineer is not ready for that yet. No. So the issue of the dirt debris pile will be moved by then. It, it should. It'll be. be gone. <laughs> it should be. I, I thought it was going to be moved even. Long before Six this months conversation. Ago. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, the one thing I didn't want to do is take all the dirt away and then have to bring dirt back in. So we're trying to figure out how the site balances. Because even on the the, pro on the property to the east or the, to the west of the road, there's some dirt that has to come out of that too. The east, where the where, where the, the uh, Genesee Valley Physical no, Therapy. No, where the Pizza Hut and the. Oh, where the Pizza Hut. And yeah, the because the. Mattress. The, the topography is just so off because <laughs> the it car wash is sitting so good. high. Okay. Um, all the properties kind of, um, you know, they grade to the east, except the car wash. The car wash is completely flat. The you know what I'm saying, Oh yeah, I, I understand. Because we were even yes, we were, the whole thing was out there with the engineer trying to right shoot now. how how we're going to put that road in, because the the parking lot of the of the car wash is so high, and the road is going to be low. So I don't know if we got to do like a retaining wall. Yeah. Well, can can the uh, there's an easement in the area that you're showing right now. Well, the easement, you could see the, the, the sewer easement, so the, the road is about 15 feet west of, the, of that manhole cover. Right. So what I was thinking is if, if, uh, if you're having grade problems and you have a relationship with Mr. Trout where you could realign that road uh, in another location that would give you better grade, that's something to look at as an option. But again, it's going to take some time for you to do that. and. Uh, Certainly, your engineer is going to have to spend some time figuring this out. So this is not going to happen in the immediate future. The road, no. It'll well, the road, I mean, part of the subdivision, or part of the development process, it'll have to be built in conjunction yeah. with what he's doing. The question is going to be the engineering and how you get to where you need to be for the final product. But, I mean, you should be starting on that and starting to think about that. So, so tonight, uh, you know, what's before the board is, uh, you know, the discussion of, 
uh, moving forward with what's being proposed, uh, the two buildings, uh, Metro Mattress and Pizza Hut, and then Genesee Valley Physical Therapy uh, to the back. And uh, conceptually, if we're, if we're good with that, uh, then uh, Dr. Pallone needs to then take the next step to, to work with his engineer uh, to ready plans for submission and then to uh, make a formal public hearing. I move to accept the proposal as discussed today and have it go through the procedural process. Yeah. Before you vote, can we just have a quick discussion on that? Um, it, you know, and, and I understand the situation when 2146 for the house was and all that business, and he does have a change in grade there just because it was different when they built. And I don't expect him to have to take all that dirt off that site at this point in time if he's going to regrade everything out in the future. But there is a lot of junk and debris on that site that should be cleaned up. And that should be taken off site as well. Yeah, and, and certainly putting up some no dumping signs. Uh, I know you, you can't uh, sit there 24 by 7, uh, you know, and until uh, you get in and actually start uh, working on the proposal and completing it, uh, you always run the risk of Mother's Little Helpers uh, dropping off uh, some building materials and some other junk uh, so that they don't have to pay to dispose of it. But uh, any you know, any signage that can be put up uh, to help, uh, you know, uh, avoid that from happening and, uh, you know, maybe, you know, I, I'm not a big advocate for putting up fencing, but, you know, maybe maybe uh, putting a chunk of fence across there uh, just, again, to give them no place to dump. Uh, and, and I'm thinking more from yourself because it sounds like you've uh, taken uh, the, the approach that if, if it's dumped, they're going to, you're going to take care of it, and I don't I mean, think I you, I don't you want. To, I don't practice. think you want to be doing that. Do I don't think you want to be doing that. You know, load after load after right. load. So, okay. Anything else? Uh, that covers it, I think. All right, uh, Dr. Vaughn. Any anything that uh, any questions for the board or anything that we have not discussed that you'd like to have added to the record? No, that's it. Okay, so uh, moved by uh, Paul, second by Linda. Uh, to uh, accept and uh, to start to move forward with uh, final plans and making an application uh, to the board for uh, these next two buildings. Uh, seeing no further discussion, those in favor, aye. Aye. Opposed? All right. Uh, thank you, Dr. Colon. Thank you. Good to, good to see you. Stay close to Mr. Costello uh, as you're going through, as, uh, as always. Okay. Uh, we'll move on to a hold harmless agreement. Uh, this is at 1525 Creek Street. Normally, um, Mr. Valentine uh, would be here. Uh, Mr. Costello has taken his PE license and uh, is continuing this evening. Uh, Mr. Costello, uh, welcome, sir. Uh, Mr. Costello, you, uh, the floor is yours. Thank you, Mr. LaFound. I took a, a night at the Holiday Inn Express last night. I'm now a professional engineer. Um, we had a chance to meet Alexander Fasanella recently, and Al, I'm just going to give that to you. That's the easiest that you're sure. looking for. Thank you. Alex and his wife recently purchased the property at 1525 Creek Street, which is on the south corner of Crestview Drive. And in doing that, I think you have a small child? Yes. So their concern is, um, and I'm doing this, hopefully everybody can see this, this is the property. Here's Crestview Drive. I, I gave you several pictures. You can see on the aerial, there's a sanitary sewer line that runs north to south, or south to north, actually. In any event, it runs through the back of his yard. And in that yard, uh, <laughs> in that yard, would tell the difference between north and south. Well, it's, it's running north south, so. Okay, very good. Uh, where the that grain is, I don't know. But in any event, you'll also notice in his pictures that there is a hedgerow of trees mm -hmm. along the right of way. Right. Mm -hmm. And his intent is to install a fence to protect his children from the street. Um, he is looking currently at a four foot fence, um, and we've explained to him the setbacks and all that business off the right of way. Um, he's wrestling right now with the idea of maybe applying to the Zoning Board of Appeals for a variance to see if he can get closer. Okay. His intent is not to go on the other side of the trees, but to stay within the tree line. Um, and that's going to be between him and the Zoning Board of Appeals. The reason he's here tonight is because there is a sanitary easement that runs through his backyard. There is currently two fences, one on his property and one on the other property, that run along the prop south property line to divide the two neighbors. Uh, over and into the existing easement. 
he would request, uh, he's trying to clean that mess up, so he's requesting approval to keep that fence in place, uh, subject to the whole harmless and license agreement. He would also like to request that he be able to encroach into the easement area with the, the four foot fence to continue it down to the existing fence, which is running along the back of his property line where you see the 100. Um, you also see a white, I should give you a copy of this actually because we did one for you. Thank you. There's a white blotch running through the middle of that area. There's a shed, I think, on the property. Or you want a shed? There was a shed. There was. The previous owners of the property Seven. removed it. And, and you, would you like to do a new shed? Yes. All right, so the building department and the town engineering staff identified this white strip in here as being an area that complies with setbacks and is out of the easement area, so that's giving him direction as to where he can place the shed if it's not going to be closer to the property and certainly outside the easement area. So in essence, he's really requesting from you, depending upon where he is with the Zoning Board of Appeals, he, in, in either respect, he has to get relief from you to allow that four foot uh, fence to encroach into that 20 foot easement area. And I think we have identified the easement for, or the uh, sewer. I believe, uh, according to the engineering staff, the sewer is nine feet deep at that location. Mm -hmm. So it, it's not going to be an issue. We're going to come to state for the sewer. This is consistent with um, requests we've had in the past. And, and just yeah. certainly, just obviously, the owner is aware of the potential the town needs to get in there. And, and your, uh, your letter is thorough as to your intent and your intent. He's kind of uh, inherited some problems that he's trying to clean up with us. Uh, so I, I suspect we'll probably have to talk to his next door neighbor about uh, asking for a license and hold harmless agreement with that fence as well. So. Oh, have you spoken to your neighbor at all? Is he aware that you're looking to put a fence up? Um, yes, okay. I have. Um, he doesn't seem to have any problems with uh, I'm, I'm going to ask a question of which neighbor. I've told to both south. of them yeah. uh, to the south. Uh, so Mark, I have spoken to Mark. Um, he didn't really seem to care that I was putting a fence up. Okay. He was like, okay, you know, doesn't bother me. So I said, all right. And, and he said, he said, fifteen twenty nine. Yes. Fifteen twenty nine. Yes. Yep. And I've also spoke to Bob. Uh, and he's at sixteen Crestview, um, and he didn't seem to mind either. Okay. And the reason why I ask that question is because in these situations with fences and sheds and other things, um, you know, working with your neighbor ahead of time can save a lot of potential time and problems down the road, um, bringing them, you know, up to speed and in the loop with what you may be thinking of doing, getting some of their input can save a lot of potential headaches down the road because we... You know, from time to time we get contacted from neighbors who are unhappy about other neighbors and what they're doing and it's well, it, it's their property right it's a property line dispute so, yeah. so I, I would encourage you you know as you continue to move forward through the process to just you know make sure that they know what's going on so there's no surprises and Jim Costello's phone doesn't ring at some <laughs> point you. saying I didn't know that that you were doing this because it, it does happen. Uh, and you can certainly tell your neighbors you've come here okay. and that you know, we've reviewed what you're looking to do. And um, I would move that we uh, grant permission um, for the, uh, what are we are doing, the oh, harmless agreement to be signed. And that is just, you know, we don't know exactly where that's going to be yet until he decides what he's going to do with the zoning yeah. board. Sure. And that's going to, it will certainly, we will certainly. In theory, we're. Yeah, exactly. And we'll make, make sure the zoning board knows that you're supportive of the encroachment wherever it may be, depending upon what they yeah. determine to be appropriate. That'd be helpful because to eliminate the hoops that he's got. Well, to and we also know exactly where the sanitary line is because we know where the manholes are in alignment with one another. So that's a good thing. We're not going to have any technical problems with the placement. And, and, we're, and we're comfortable that uh, the line from manhole to manhole uh, is. <laughs> Unless somebody does be. that. Eric's got to go down and check. Similar, be. similar to what we had uh, behind uh, Baytown, right, uh, uh, Mr. Tate? I'm, I'm comfortable with this. Um, I think I'm actually maybe been the first one to talk to him about it um, as we were looking at a, kind of a settlement area in the front yard and wanted to make sure it wasn't a sewer issue. Um, you know, based on that, we kind of came to find out that the sewer actually ran through the backyard and, you know, talking through that. 
um, and his desire for the fence and suggested he come here. So, um, you know, based on the fact that it's the sewer was put in uh, as part of the Creek Street improvement, and it's kind of as new as it is, um, and the depth, you know, don't yeah. don't see it being any issue, and you know, yeah. it should be fine. That's a focus. So. Did you move from within Penfield to here, or move into Penfield? I, I moved from the city of Rochester. Great. Yeah. So. Welcome. Well, welcome. Thank you. I haven't been here very long. <laughs> All right, uh, so uh, Paula has moved uh, that uh, uh, we support this whole harmless agreement. Uh, is there a second? Uh, it's been seconded. Any further uh, discussion uh, from the board? Mr. Costello, anything additional you'd like to see added to the record? No, I think we'll work with him to get that document in place. We'll put a resolution in for you to, offer, to be authorized to sign the agreement. Okay. And I think he, we spent enough time with him where he understands what his responsibilities okay. are under the agreement. And then uh, from the property owner, any, any uh, questions that you might have for the board? Um, not really. I was going to just chat with Jim at some point. Okay. He's, He's a DPW that. guy, so he appreciates uh, uh, sanitary sewers intact. So. Great. Well, uh, yeah, for a whole bunch of reasons, uh, <laughs> yeah, especially right. when it's running through his property uh, that it yeah. continues to flow the way. I appreciate it. I'm not even a DPW. That's right. <laughs> but I'm a mom. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> okay, uh, so the move and second. Those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. All right. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, continue to stay connected with uh, Mr. Costello and Eric. If you're looking for an engineer, talk to Eric. Um, uh, not necessarily Mr. Costello. He can help you through the administrative piece, but uh, he's we're, he's still working on his engineering Directions. license. I know which way things fall. So, <laughs> all right. Thank you, uh, oh. thank you very much, Thanks, and uh, welcome to Penfield. Uh, there being no further business uh, to come before the board this evening, uh, the April 25th, uh, 2018 work session uh, stands adjourned at 7:52 uh, uh, p.m.